So that sums up 7-4. 7-4 wasn't um, anything crazy because it is a lot of a repeat of what we covered in chapter 5 with simplifying. So the reason we look at or talk about 7-4, though, is because it does directly flow into 7-5. Uh, so 7-4 is sort of like a repeat or a refresher, and then we add in the cubics, the cortex, and the fifth roots as well, just to give you an idea of how they work in their connection and relationship to parentheses raising the powers as well. So, and I guess to just really fully put that into connection, any nth root is always equivalent to whatever is inside here raised to one over n outside. And we're going to see that a little bit more in either 7, 6, or 7, 7, where we start adding powers inside and powers outside, and we make the connection between going from rational or radical and radical or rational. So in order to really be able to do that, we're going to take square roots and radicals to one step further. And if you think about chapter 7 where we started, we started with operations on functions. And we started with adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing functions together. So 7 by is going to be about adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing radicals together. So we start with multiplication because it's the property we're most familiar with. So if you have two radicals and they have multiple things underneath the radical being multiplied together, then you can rewrite that as each individual piece under the radical being multiplied separately. And we use that technique to simplify radicals. If n is even and a and b are both non-negative, then we can do this. If n is odd, then it does not matter. And that's kind of what we were looking at with that problem on last night's homework. So, for example, the square root of 2 times the square root of 8 can be rewritten as the square root of 16, and vice versa. The square root of 16 could be rewritten as 2 and 8. We could also rewrite this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 4. And we could also say that the square root of 16 is 4. And one way we don't always think about is you could also say that this is the square root of 16, which is the square root of 4 squared. And that really reiterates the whole power to a power being multiplied and the square root of something squared becoming that number. In example two, it's beneficial to rewrite this as the cube root of 27. Or again, to think of 9 as 3 and 3. If you have three of something, then it is a perfect cube. So again, that's kind of like the cube root of three cubed, which makes that a three. And that's what we talked a little bit about yesterday, how you want to rewrite something in all of its multiples to see if you have enough to break them out. So if it's a cube root, we need three of a number. If it's a square root, we need two. If it's a fourth root, you need four, fifth root, you need five, so on, and so forth. So the square root of 32x to the eighth. So I was talking earlier, we were looking at 
perfect squares, and we are talking about how any even number is considered a perfect square for a square root, because it is divisible by 2. So the square root of 32, you would think of as the square root of 16 and 2, and the square root of x to the 8. So you can, again, break it down. Now, we don't have to always rewrite it out, but that's what you're ultimately doing. So that your square root of 16 is 4, 8 divided by 2 is also 4, and we get 4x to the 4th root 2. Okay, 16, A, 24, B, 13. So again, divide the exponents by 2. Simplify your numbers. You have 4, A, 12, B, 6, and a B that stays behind. So here's where the rule kind of works in a backwards way. If you have two radicals being multiplied together, then sometimes in order to simplify them, you need to multiply the stuff inside together. So right now, I have a cube root. The number 12 does not currently simplify in my cube root. And over here, I have 18, which also doesn't simplify in my cube root. But if I multiply the 12 and the 18 together, then I can simplify because I will have enough of the same number to pull a number out. If you have two numbers out in front of your power, or cube roots rather, you multiply them together. So that would become 15. Cube root, remember we can take a cube root of a negative. So it's okay that that's a negative. And then what I'm gonna do is kind of treat my number like multiples of other numbers. So 12 is 6 and 2. 18 is 6 and 3. But if I multiply 12 and 18 together, then I get 6 times 2 times 3 times 6. But we know that 2 times 3 is 6. So I have ending up with three sixes. Where if you would multiply 12 and 18 together, you got 216. And if you didn't know, that's a perfect cube for six. So what we're going to do with that 216 for all three sixes is bring it out. And I can bring the negative. That leaves one A here and two A's there. So that makes this a cube. So if I have three A's in my cube root, I can bring an A out. I have four and two. So again, we're adding them. So that gives me six. 6 divided by 3 and 2. So I can bring 2 up. So all the numbers and variables under my radical are canceled. And I have to multiply by 6 and by 15. And I get negative 90 A. In a fourth root, you are looking for four 
four of something. So right now I have three x's and five x's. So three and five make eight. Two and two make four. And two times eight is 16. Three times two is six. 16 is the same as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So we'll bring that out as a 2. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 4 divided by 4 is 1. Because this is even and this is even, my y needs absolute values. 6 times 2 is 4. 2 I get 12 x squared absolute value y. We also previously talked about rationalizing a denominator. So there is a rule in math in which you cannot have a radical in your denominator. So we can also break a single radical into two radicals. So that's also one of our division rules. So if you have a single radical, you can think of it as the top and bottom separate. The power on the outside will stay with both. So if you have the square root of 27 over the square root of 3, this is a case where writing it as a single radical is more helpful. If you didn't see it as a single radical, you could have also said that the square root of 27 was 3 square roots of 3 over the square root of 3 which would also allow your square roots of 3 to cancel and ultimately get you to 3 as well. So again, you could have done it where you simplified the top, it cancels the bottom, and also leads to 3. And something like example 2, breaking that up allows us to see that 8 becomes 2, and x to the 6 becomes 2x squared. If you have two perfect squares, then it's really nice because you just take their square roots separately. So it's like root 9 over root 4, which we know is 3 halves or 1.5. Twelve and four again. Twelve divided by two gives us six. Square root of four is two. Now, one of the things that I've seen is that we get goofed up. Um, x to the six over two is equivalent or the same as one half x to the six. You just have to make sure that when you write that x to the six to the right, it does not look like it's just in the denominator. It has to be in the middle. Of like that dividing So then that leads into rationalizing. So what happens if that bottom number is not a perfect square? It is not a perfect cube? Well, we cannot have a radical in our denominator. So if you look at that first example, I have 3 over the square root of 5. So we cannot have the square root of 5 in the bottom part. So how do you get rid of a square root in your denominator? You are going to multiply, essentially, by itself. If it's a square root, because that means I only need... One more root 
But in math, we can only mathematically multiply by the number one. So if I need the square root of five on bottom, to make that equal to multiplying by one, I have to also multiply the top by the square root of five. So that creates three square roots of five, two square roots times each other, so I get three square roots of five over five. And again, if you multiply five times five, you get the square root of 25, which we know is five as well. If you were to simplify using our properties, you could treat this like the x to the 6 over x to the 7. And if you recall from the beginning of chapter 6, if you have the same variable, then the rule is that you subtract the bottom away from the top. So if you have 6 on top and 7 on the bottom, then that's like the square root of x to the negative 1. And we talked about how you can't have a negative exponent, so we would have rewritten that as 1 over x. But now that creates an issue where we have, yeah. I don't know what that's going to look like. Well, I'm going to finish it with x and then we'll do y. Because uh, this is a good case because, again, one of the other things I saw is that we forgot. that the square root of 1 is 1. So this becomes 1 over root x, and we cannot have that square root in our denominator. So we're going to make this square root x over square root x. So you get the square root of x over x. And now the x and y. So you can see what happens when you have the mixed variable and the value in the bottom. So that's like if you had x and x. And I'll just do it with x and y. So you would simplify your top and simplify your bottom separately. But again, because the inside is even, the square root is even, my x cubed means the absolute values. If I have seven y's, then I know I can bring out three. And one must stay behind. So what happens is we have that square root, the plus view, in my denominator. We cannot have the square root in our denominator. So we're going to multiply by one which means we're going to multiply top and bottom by square root y. Rationalizing the denominator by creating a new y down here will leave the square root of y up top. So you have absolute value x cubed root y this is like y cubed times y now though. Because the two square roots become their own. So you again have to apply your rules, which says you need to add the three and the one together to get a four.
the square root y cannot simplify with the y form because they do not have like powers. They are not like terms. And they're all We're going to take that cube root 6 and 5x and think of them as separate problems. So when I rationalize a square root, the square root is 2, I needed 2 values, or I can multiply by itself to become 5. If you have a cube root and you need to simplify a cube root, then you need three of each to take the cube root. So if I want to take the cube root of 5x and get it out of my denominator, I technically need Rid of a cube root, it's like the square root needs two, a cube root needs three. Or we have to create perfect cube. So you would multiply by however many more you need. And five times five is 25, x times x is x squared. The cube root of 25 x squared is equivalent to writing it twice. Does that make sense? So flip on top and bottom out to make a one. So that's two ways to write the same thing. You have now rationalized your denominator because you have three of them. So this becomes by x. Your top, this is where the multiplying rule comes into play. You have 6 and 25 that need to multiply together inside to give you 150. So 25 times 6 is 150 x squared. 25 and 6 don't carry common multiples. To bring out a cube. The 6 is just 2 and 3, and 25 is 5 and 5. So 150 isn't going to have any multiples that simplify it either. And then the last example is a fifth group. So if the outside number is a 5, I need how many of each inside number then? Five. Or you could just simply multiply by four by four by four by four by four. But four, we already know, is really the same as two times two. So I could think of the number four as having two twos already, which means I only need how many more. Or you can multiply by four more fours without too much in the room. Okay. Okay. So you have cube root five, cube root three on top. Okay. We're going to multiply, we're going to treat the four like two twos. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by three more twos, which is two times two times two, or eight, and four more y's. Eight times three is twenty-four. So you have the fifth root of 24 y to the 4 all over 2y. If 
you had come in with fours instead of twos, your number would have been 768. Someone's turning on the next page. I think the last one I think is probably the hardest. Don't worry about anything. 